My grandfather had a tobacco farm in North Carolina. He grew all his own vegetables. You know, he made his own corn liquor. We ate the best foods. We had the best meat. So I never really realized we were poor. I'm a water safety instructor and I train lifeguards. At my age, being able to work with all these young kids, you know, after all the dirt that I've done in my life and all the bad things that I've done, I like now to try to reverse my karma a little bit. In Fairfax, Virginia, that's where I started my career as a drug dealer. <laughs> When I got out of the Marine Corps, I ran into a foreign exchange student from Columbia. He was only 15 years old, and he's got a quarter pound of coke. Cocaine had just started coming around, but nobody hardly even knew what coke was, so I told him, let me try this first. This stuff was so light and so fluffy, it just went into my nose and dissolved. The taste when it went down my throat was like pure ether. No burn, just a light numbing. I mean, it gave me a feeling of euphoria like nothing I'd ever done before. And before I knew it, I was selling about 100 kilos a year. My partner, Ronnie, ended up flipping on me and they convicted me for importing and distributing $25 million worth of cocaine in the metropolitan area. It's 1974, I was 24 years old. In the end, I did 23 years in prison behind bars. My nickname in prison was Psycho Bill. Most people just stayed away from me because I was so muscular and big, and I believed I was fucking invincible. All I did was knocking people out, escaping, and just adding on to my time. I learned that in order not to get got, <clears throat> you needed to be beefed up and strong enough mentally and physically to, to survive and to live. If you were threatening me, I would knock you out with one punch right in front of the God. I don't give a fuck. I was trying to be extorted by five fellas from Richmond. They told me they were gonna take my shit and they're not getting it. Five of them came and they came with little kitchen knives. I figured when they jumped on me, I'm dead, but I'm gonna take some of them punk motherfuckers with me. So I went to one of my buddies that worked in the machine shop and had him make me two big ass butcher knives. Took magazines, duct taped them knives to my hands, wrapped them around my legs, wrapped them around my body. So I pretty much had body armor on. I saw him come up the stairway to the fourth floor. I jumped right down the middle of them and said, let's dance, motherfuckers. And they looked at me like I was a demon and ran. Me and Franny met in prison of all places. She was a devout Christian. Her and my mom were like best friends. So she already knew about me, you know, all the wild stories and stuff. So my mom brings this nice little church-going Fran down to prison to see me. I come out, long hair down to my waist, big Fu Manchu beard. See this pretty little thing sitting out there, and I swear to God, she was shining. If I wouldn't have met Fran and gotten married to her in prison five years before I got out, she waited five years faithfully for me to get out. I would be back in prison for life. I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful that I ever met her. She's the best thing that ever happened to me. I've been asked before, if you had it to do all over again, would you do it like you did it? And I, I said, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't change a thing, man. Because if I didn't, if I did anything different, I wouldn't be who I am today and I'm really happy. And everyone that I'm around now, I can be a mentor to some of these young men. And that's how I feel more than spending those years in prison to repay a debt to society that I believe is full of shit. Now that I do realize I did do harm. You know, the drugs that I sold did do harm. And I regret that. But I would never change a bit of it because I like who I am. I'm the best possible me 
that I can be. I want to run with the young dogs. I don't want to sit up on the porch with the old dogs. I've got this old, almost 70 year old body, but I've got this mind of a young man. And I can still run with them. You know, how can you not be the best you when you have that going on in your life? To glean joy from everything I see instead of misery and moaning and groaning. And I love every day that I'm alive and above ground. I'm grateful for it. I'm gonna die with my motherfucking boots on. <laughs>